I want you, I need you, but there ain't no way I'm ever going to love you. Forget it. I need you. Yeah. I need you to pay the bills. I want you. I want you to pay the bills. But the one thing I can't do is love you. But don't feel bad. You know, two out of three ain't bad. Said Meatloaf before he died <laughs> in his classic song, Two Out of Three Ain't Bad. I like that one line. Um, he's talking about how cold it is outside. But you've been cold to me so long. I'm crying icicles instead of tears. So cold that she's been to him. I'm not sure what that means. She's not warm. She's not sweet and kind. She's cold and bitter. So cold for so long that when he cries, it immediately turns into icicles. That's cold. Anyway, how you guys doing? Welcome back to Quitting Weed number 23. My name is Michael Lyons. And these are the voyages of the starship rock star cartoonist. Gotta raise some money, man. I'm starving to death. Have you guys uh, contributed to our GoFundMe campaign? Get on it. <laughs> I like to be the, the assertive guy who, you know usually when uh indian guy comes up to you on the street looking for a handout it's all you know head down hey uh niji can i can i talk to you i was wondering can, can you help out a brother i'm i'm really going through a hard time you know it's very very apologetic and non-threatening me i'm like hey have you guys uh given me something for nothing yeah click the link below go fund me we're trying to you know get funds. Junia. Today is Ojibwe word of the day. Junia. Money. Nobody likes to ask for it. People actually don't mind giving it. That's the weird thing. But it's very awkward to ask. So I'm here today to ask you for money. Put up your... Put them up. Yeah, reach for the sky. When I was a kid, we used to play cops and robbers. But you'd always want to be the robber, you know. You'd break in some place, like rob a bank. I remember playing that with my friend Mike. We'd run around. Hey, you there! <laughs> you know, you take your, your friends hostage, tie them to a tree. You know, your other friends would would be the cops and they'd try to come save the girl who's tied to the tree. And you're like, hey, pew, pew. I got you, fall down. Count to 10, I'm gonna run and then you can get up. And the war continued throughout the afternoon in the deep woods and gravel roads, fighting for truth, justice, bank robberies, hostages. We had one kid in our neighborhood, and by neighborhood, I mean he lived down the gravel road about a quarter mile. Uh, he wasn't an only child, but you'd, you'd swear he was. He was spoiled like an only kid. He had, a, he had a fake leg, and so I think his parents kind of spoiled him. But uh, so <laughs> whenever we'd play guns, He'd like shoot him and he goes, no, no, no. I've got an invisible force field. I see, I didn't tell you, but I have super superhero powers. I'm, I'm in invisible force field, man. And I'd be like, oh, okay, fine. Uh, my superhero power is laser eyes, which cut through invisible force fields. He goes, no, you can't. I patented my one. Okay, well, I got that power. No, you can't. I patented it, he'd say. Only one person, he had the patent 
on his made up superhero power that would make him impervious to bullets. So we'd have to fight and, you know, but I got really good at running around and, uh, the woods hiding and bushes and stuff like that. Being quiet as you run through leaves. Yeah. I learned all these old Indian tricks. You know, walk backwards. You, know, you leave false footprints. Uh, throw a rock in the distance so they turn their head to see, and then you jump them from somewhere else. I would have made a good soldier if I wasn't so afraid of, you know, being yelled at by military guys. When I was a kid, I was never afraid of going to war. I figured I could handle that. You know, I'd have my own machine gun and stuff. What I was afraid of was being drafted and having to go to boot camp. I wasn't interested in boot camp. But I never did it. A lot of my friends joined the military. I went the college route eventually. I wanted to be a cartoonist and I figured, well, I could get a comic strip in the college newspaper. All I have to do is get myself enrolled in college and then go to the college newspaper and say, Hey, do you guys need a cartoonist? I'm not too bad with a pen. <laughs> and so I did that. Six years later, I had my four year degree. And the rest is history. So anyway, here's a song I wrote called Crashing Down. When we first recorded it, some people asked us if they could include it in a, uh, an actual collection of 9-11 tribute songs. We're like, yeah, you bet. This is our tribute to the, sur the survivors the brave heroes of 9-11, you know, but it was never about 9-11. I wrote it before 9-11. Crashing Down is about my parents getting a divorce. They, uh, they threatened to get a divorce 20 years before they actually went through with it. But we always lived with this looming, they said they were gonna get a divorce things. You know, they didn't love each other. They're gonna get a divorce. And what it means for the kids is everything is going to come crashing down. That's what your idea of the family you come from is crashing down. So when I wrote it, I was sort of processing the grief of my grand, my grandparents, <laughs> my parents divorce, even though they hadn't divorced yet. And then luckily 9-11. Yeah, crashing down. He's talking about this. Yeah. <laughs> this will get the song in the record.
when the kids are grown and gone. So why does this feel? Why does it feel so? Thank you for listening. You've been watching Putting Weed, number 23, on Michael Owens. I will see you again. Ego Wabamin. Nanabuju Nindijanikaz. Nanabuju is my name. And if you'd like to support our show, uh, click the link in the description box to our GoFundMe page. A couple of years ago, we put up this GoFundMe page and we're trying to raise money for new equipment. We got to get a better camera, you guys. Michael's been uh, filming on his cheap old cell phone camera for years now and 
we do the live stream on a, a $30 plastic, you know, webcam. But, and also this fall, we're going to be going into the schools around here, all around northern Minnesota and Wisconsin. Uh, and, and we'd like to bring copies of our book, Ojibwe Language, uh, what's it called here? You'd think I would have had this ready. The book is called Ojibwe Words and Phrases. Because here's the deal. Uh, as far as I know, every school in northern Minnesota, anyway, has at least one Ojibwe language class. And as far as I know, none of them have a, uh, a textbook especially for beginning Ojibwe. So this is a, just a handy reference guide to beginning Ojibwe language. It's not a dictionary. You're still going to have to buy a dictionary. But uh, this is available for sale, but for whatever reason, the schools don't know about it. So we can't really afford to buy our own book and give out. If you'd like to help us, <laughs> buy some of these books and give them out some of the money from the GoFundMe campaign will go for that too and otherwise uh, people have been just I can't even tell you how much we appreciate the support we've got from the uh, the GoFund from the, the, the patron saints of GoFundMe so click the link if you'd like to sub Speaking of patron saints, we also have a Patreon page. You can help support us on there. Or if you just want to buy us a cup of coffee or something, we have a PayPal. Or, you know, what have you. Anyway, I just want to let you know about this. Go fund me. Support the Boujou, not a Boujou podcast. I mean, what else are you going to spend your money on? The casino? Come on. <laughs> All right, thank you for listening. Miigwech ka bizen dawieg. And I will see you again. Gigawabamin, minowa, hoa.